Hello everyone, today will be a fruit review about magma. Magma is funny, alright? It's one of the most hated fruits in all of Grand Peace Online due to its high damage output and burn damage, along with instantaneous block breaks that allow you to start off combos with ease. Anyways, without further ado, let's begin the magma fruit review. Magma Swamp is a barrage based move where you turn into magma and can move around in the magma. Magma Swamp does not stun your opponent, but Magma Swamp has hyper armor against melee attacks. However, grab moves and knockback attacks can take you out of the move. When ending Magma Swamp, you punch above yourself with magma and block break anyone caught in it. Magma Eruption is a burst to damage AoE move. You stomp the ground surrounding the ground with magma and have that magma erupt on anyone caught in it. It deals 10 ticks of damage and block breaks. Magma Fist and Magma Hound are basically the same move. Magma Fist is slower but scales higher and Magma Hound is faster but deals slightly less damage. However, Magma Fist caps its damage sooner at 135 damage while Magma Hound caps its damage at either 160 to 170 damage. They both do not block break. Next you got Magma Rain. You can shoot up to 56 small fists of magma at your opponent. This magma can block break if enough hit. However, if the person that you're fighting has high defense, then it will not block break them. Magma has three passives. One passive is that all its moves deal burn damage. The second passive is that Magma has a Logia bar, so it can evade melee attacks not imbued with hockey or burn damage for a set amount of time. And the third passive is that it can walk on water. Now that we're done with the move set, let's move on to PvP. Objectively, Magma is a really strong fruit with almost any weapon, as its main source of damage output relies on the fruit itself rather than using melee attacks to hit your opponent. Magma is a fruit that deals large bursts of damage in a single move, and despite it only having 5 moves, its moveset is still considered extremely good. Now, if you're going to use Magma, I personally recommend putting your stance into fruit as it allows you to also grind effectively while taking advantage of your high damage output moves such as Magma Eruption. The main staple of Magma's move kit is Magma Eruption as it block breaks and is near instantaneous, making it hard for people to react to. However, experienced players will be expecting your Magma Eruption at all times. Magma, however, is predictable and throwing out your moves, for example Magma Fist randomly, will most likely get yourself perfect blocked by opponents that know what they're doing. Magma's biggest issue is its predictability, so even though the fruit is prone to kiting around your opponent, using your M1s to confirm your moves is important to make sure that you do not get perfect blocked. Magma's burn damage is especially good against Paramecia, and fruitless players, and should be exploited as much as possible against them as it can deal immense amounts of damage. Now that we have finished with the PvP side of Magma, let's move on to its counterplay. If you fight an experienced Magma user, they'll usually M1 before starting their attacks, so in that case, just be better than them at M1ing. However, if they're inexperienced, you can definitely mitigate the amount of damage you take tenfold. Magma Eruption, as I said before, is extremely predictable. If they use Magma Swamp, just Gepo away from them and use a knockback move to punish them for it. If they use Magma Eruption without M1 chaining into it, just jump. That's literally all you do. If you see them charging it up, don't even have to touch the floor, like use a move to get them out of it. Magma Fist or Hound, literally all you have to do is block it. I know, I know a lot of people are like, just hold F, like literally. Magma Fist and Magma Hound's windup is so incredibly noticeable, like it's so easy to block it, especially if the person just throws it out randomly, and if you're feeling extra devious, perfect block it. It's, it's so easy to perfect block these two moves if they're just thrown around randomly. And Magma Rain, just Gepo until it's over. Or if you have Magma yourself, or even Pika, and feel extra, extra devious, get bow up to them and counter with your own magma rain and watch as their hp is melted the reason i say don't block magma rain is because magma rain will usually block break you so by blocking it 
they'll probably get a few hits off. So what you should do is you should Gepo until you can't Gepo anymore and then start blocking it so that you probably will not get block breaked. Anyways, cannon play is finished, so let's move on to the grinding aspect of Magma. You do a lot of damage and you deal burn damage with high AoE attacks, so in other words, when it comes to grinding, you stay on top. However, you do not have a flight move, so you'll have a bit of trouble in dungeons. However, that really won't be too much of an issue. This is short because literally the only other fruit that is as good as magma in the all-around aspect of grinding in the game is Fika. That's literally it, in my opinion at least. So, now that we're done with grinding, uh, let's move on to the conclusion. Magma is an extremely good fruit. It's really powerful as it dishes out high amounts of damage and is optimal for both PvP and PvE. I can definitely see this fruit getting nerfs in Update 5, as it's really just overpowered, honestly. Anyways, there's not much to say about the fruit anymore, so have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Peace.